systems of equations are a pair of equations that are used to solve for two unknown values. Normally those two unknowns are referred to as x and y value, and you must have two equations in order to solve for them. There are three methods of solving for systems of equations, and one is graphing, two is the substitution method, and the third is elimination method. Using the graphing method is really similar to the last unit's homework assignment or tasks, which were the linear functions. And once you take an equation, rewrite it in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, and graph it, the solution is the one set of x and y values that make both equations true simultaneously. So if we are to look at this system here, I have negative 2x plus y equals 1 and 3x plus y equals 1. Now I can't graph these in the current form that they're in, so I need to rewrite them in slope-intercept form. If I look at the first equation, to get y by itself, I need the, two, the negative 2x to go to the other side. That's easy enough. I just add it to both sides. Add 2x. Oh, whoops, that, that pen's done. Add 2x to both sides so that I have y equals 2x plus 1. And I need to take away 3x from this side to isolate y. So y equals negative 3x plus 1 barren y equals mx plus b format. Now if I graph these two, I want to look at where the two lines intersect. And where those lines cross is going to go ahead and be the solution to my equation. That if I plugged in that x and y value into the top equation and the bottom equation, it's a solution for each. So if I have this here, I start at 1. And where do I go from there? It says my slope is 2. So that means I go up 1, or sorry, up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. And if I graph that line, it's going to look something like that. Now if I go to my other system, I have a 1 for my y-intercept. That means I start at 1 on my y-axis and I have a slope of negative 3. So down 3, 1, 2, 3, over 1. Down 3, over 1. And if I plot that line, I find, well, if I drew better, uh, that my lines cross at my y-intercept. So the solution is 0 and 1. Now I can verify that that is the correct value by going 2x, and x is supposed to be 0, so if 2 times 0 plus 1, is that 1 for a solution? Yes. If I have negative 3 times 0, that zeroes out, plus 1, that equals 1 as a solution. So it makes both equations true. Graphing can be a really easy way to find a solution to your system, but it has its drawbacks. If you happen to have an answer that ends up being a fraction, graphing is going to be a really hard way to find the precise exact value that's going to make both equations true. But there is power or information that we can glean from the equations written in slope-intercept form that let us know, is it even worth, is there even a solution? Because sometimes in a system, there's no way that these two are going to work out. So we'll take a look at some of those rules. So say we have a very simple pair of equations here, a very simple system. This type of format is very easy to graph because they're very simple numbers. You're probably going to be having a slope of 1. That's really easy to graph and find where the lines intersect. So again, the starting point, get your equations in slope-intercept form. If I subtract x from both sides, that leaves me with y equals negative x plus 4. Subtract the x from both sides, I get negative y equals negative x plus 2. But we know that our y can never have a negative sign on it. So I wrap the equation in parentheses, put a negative on the outside, and this lets me find the inverse or the opposite value of everything there, which turns into y equals x minus 2. So if I were to graph this, 
I would start on my graph at four and I have a negative slope, which means I go down one, over one, down one, over one, down one, over one, one, and down one, over one, like this, okay? Here it's saying I start at negative two and I go up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, over one. And graphically, it looks like my solution should be one, two, three, and y for one. Now I can verify that by plugging in those values. If x is three, three minus two, is that one? Yes. If I have x is negative x value, so negative three plus four, does that leave me with one? Yes, that's my solution. So that works out nice and easy. But if we had had a half or a y-intercept of three-fourths, this would not have been easy. But we, by rewriting it in slope-intercept form, we have some rules that we know of whether we need to even worry about solving it or whether we can decide whether there are infinite number of solutions or no solutions at all. So I'll write down the rules for that in just a second. So the way to know whether it's even worth your time trying to find the solution to the system is if you rewrite the equations in slope-intercept form, do you have a different slope? As long as the number in front of the x is different in both equations, there is a solution. Because if we're graphing it, it doesn't matter where we start. As long as the lines move in different directions at some point, because they have different rate of change, they will cross and you can find a solution. Now, finding that solution graphically might not be very practical. You wanna use an algebraic formula, but at least you know whether you even need to go through that work or not. If when you rewrite your equations, you find that the number in front of X is the same, but the B value, the Y intercept is different, there is no solution. There's no reason to go through the elimination method, substitution method, graphing method, any of those, because there's no solution. When they have the same slope, it means your lines are moving at the exact same rate and they're parallel. They are never going to cross because from their starting points, they are moving at the exact same rate. So nothing is going to make them intersect. So you just say, no solution, parallel lines. Then, if when you rewrite your equations in slope-intercept form, you happen to get the same slope and the same y-intercept, guess what? It's the exact same equation, just written in two different ways. Like when we had previously done um, the distributive and factoring form of something, you take out the common factor, but when you distribute it back in, it's the same equation. <sighs> That's what that is. And so infinite solutions mean any X and Y pairing that you put in, it's gonna make both of them true. So that if I graphed them, it would graph as me just making one line because that's the line that applies to both. The, the no solution, I'm gonna have a set of lines. I don't know what direction here, this is just an example, but they move the same way. And then as long as you have different slopes, they will at some point cross and you get a solution. So that's where rewriting in the slope-intercept form can be an asset, maybe save you some time and a headache of realizing, oh, I went through all that work for nothing. So this is the foundations of solving with systems of equations. Again, it involves two equations and two variables that you're trying to solve for that make, it's the one pairing of x and y values that make both equations true.